In this problem, we're going to learn how to do a hypothesis testing procedure using the graphing calculator. Um, you really can't do the entire procedure in the graphing calculator. I mean, you can you can certainly do it all in the calculator, but you know there of course still has to be things that you provide yourself. So in other words, the calculator is not going to tell you the conclusion necessarily. It's not going to also uh, copy down the data or state the HO and the HA for you. So there are some things we still want to do with the paper and pencil procedure. So I'm going to start with that. So when I read the problem, it says the U.S. government claims that the average woman has a mean weight of 143 pounds. It then says the study is a study is done which involved a random sample of 35 women with an average weight of 146 pounds and a standard deviation of 29 pounds, right? So it's a hypothesis test about the mean weight, right? Because it says use a 1% significance level to test the government's claim. What's the government's claim? The government claims that the average woman has a mean weight of 143 pounds. Okay, so we're going to use that then to start out the problem. So again, the calculator can't tell us the claim, so we have to figure that out ourselves. So I'm going to write this claim down. And remember, it said the government claims that the average woman has a mean weight of 143 pounds. So they're claiming the mean is equal to 143. Now, from there, we also need to come up with the HO and the HA ourselves. The calculator cannot do that for us. So since the claim has an equal to sign, we'll let that be HO. And then HA, of course, is going to be the opposite of that, or not equal to in this case, right? All right, and from there, we want to enter the data or write down the data. So these problems always have an N, an X bar, a standard deviation, and we usually will have a significance level. So we'll have like an alpha in the problem. All right, so when I look back at the problem, it said that we had a random sample of 35 women. So we're going to say N is 35. It also said that there was an average weight of 146 pounds for the group of women they surveyed, and they had a standard deviation of 29 pounds. They go on to say that we wanted to use a 1% significance level, so 1% or 0 0.01. All right, so that's our data. This is important because we need the data enter to enter into the calculator. Now, the other steps the calculator can do for us up until the initial conclusion part. So we're going to do this problem with the traditional method. Later on, we'll see a problem that uses the p-value approach. The calculator gives the p-value directly, and we learned how to find the critical values in an earlier video. So in this video, we're going to actually use the traditional method, which means we'll not rely on the p-value to come up with our initial conclusion. We're going to actually determine the critical z-value using the calculator as well, but that'll be a separate function. All right, so let's put our calculator up here, and let's go ahead and see where to find this hypothesis testing procedure in the calculator. We're going to press the STAT key. We're going to arrow over to where it says test, and it's actually our first option there, the Z test, the one sample Z test. So basically, because our N is large here, we're going to go ahead and use the Z test. Now again, if you're taking stats in a class that uses a more formal approach to choosing between Z and T, you would probably use the T test here because of the S being the standard deviation instead of having the population standard deviation. So if you don't know the population standard deviation, officially we're supposed to use the T test. But in many classes, including my classes, the ones I teach, I let my students use the Z test as long as the sample size is over 30. So we're going to use this or do this problem with the Z test. So we'll select option one. All right, so let's look at the two options. We either have data or stats. So we've been over this before, I think, when we're using the calculator. We choose stats as long as we have summary values like X bar and S, right? If we had the actual raw data numbers, if we had actually the 35 individual data values, then we would choose the data option. But since we don't have that, we're going to do stats, come down here, and what it's asking for is the value from HO. The value from HO is the number you find in HO. That's 143 for us. Let's type that in, 143. Then we're going to go down. It wants the standard deviation. So we're going to use 29 as a replacement for sigma, since our S is going to substitute for sigma. So we'll put 29 in there for our standard deviation. For our X bar, we're going to enter 146, so 146. And then for N, we're going to enter our 35. Okay, and then we come down here and it wants to know the symbol we have in our HA. So this is why it was important to express HO and HA, right? So what's the symbol we have in HA? It looks like not equal to, so we're going to highlight that option. And then come down here to where it says calculate. And it gives us the uh, 
HA at the top, right? And then it gives us the test stat, and then it gives us the p-value. Now the p-value we're not going to worry about here because we're going to do this problem with the traditional method. So we'll just look at the test stat. And the test stat turns out to be, looks like 0.61. So our test stat is 0.61. So let's say our z test stat is then 0 0.61. Now from there, we have to find the critical value, right? If we're doing the traditional method. So to use your Grackman calculator to get the critical value, you would label the z-axis here. We would notice that it's a two-tailed test because of the not equal to. So we'd be looking for the critical z-values here and here. So if you remember, in order to find the critical z-values for a two-tailed test, we have to enter into the calculator the alpha divided by 2, and that'll give us the left-tailed critical value, and then we can just make it positive for the right-hand side. So let's do that quickly. Let's take our calculator and try to determine this uh, critical value. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to hit the second, we're going to hit the VARS option, so second and then the VARS button, and then go down to option 3 where it says normal or inverse normal, pardon me. And then from there you're going to type in the alpha, 0 0.01, and you're going to divide it by 2 because of the two-tailed test. And when you do that, you get negative 2.576. Negative 2.576. However, we also have the positive version on the other side, which we're going to place here which would be 2.576. Now if you look at our test stat and where it lands, you can see that it lands around here. So we're going to say that we do not reject HO, and therefore we do not support HA. And then of course we'd finish the problem based on that. So our claim of course was uh, HO. So when we say we do not reject HO, that means we do not reject the government's claim. So this data does not allow us to reject the government's claim. So basically we're saying that um, we'll allow the government's claim to stand. We'll assume that it's still correct. So we're going to say that essentially we believe that the average woman in America weighs 143 pounds.